Welcome back to the channel. You are in for such a juicy video today because come close, come close, come a little closer. I'm going to tell you 10 actionable steps that you can start taking today, this month, in the middle of April to start your education consulting business online. So stay until the end of this video because I also created a free resource for you. It's a blog that you can save to your desktop. You can share it with your teacher friends. You can share it with your entrepreneur friends because listen, 2024 is the year that we are not going to be in this rigged education system anymore. So I'm gonna get right into these tips, but let me tell you a little background. So I work with a few education technology companies like Clever EdTech, Teach for America, um, just black professionals and black entrepreneurs as well who are creating curriculum and courses. Now, it's not always for students. Sometimes these people are creating curriculums for marketing departments, right? For diversity, equity, and inclusion for college startups, right? These people are in higher education. They're in a lot of different areas. They're in the workforce, but their main goal is to educate the masses on a particular niche topic. I've been doing this for the past eight years and it dawned on me recently, just in the last six months maybe, I'm like, so me as a writer, I don't have a background necessarily in like K through 12 education. But as I look at these opportunities, I look at the clients I'm working with and I look at the state of teachers today and I'm like, hmm, why are black educators, black social workers, black nurses, black service professionals not in this industry and complaining about the 15 to $20 jobs that they have to deal with in corporate America or in the education system? Because the truth is it's rigged. We know that you cannot create your own curriculum. If you have black students in your classroom, a lot of times they're bored, they're not paying attention because the curriculum they're receiving is not a reflection of them and what they want to see themselves as. I remember when I had my first black teacher, I was in second grade. I grew up in Ashkenazi Jewish community in an all white school. I was the only black child for a long time. And so I had my first black teacher and I was so excited, but my heart was broken because she had to go on maternity leave. There's students out there that are just like I was that are literally waiting for you to come up and show up for them. But they're not always in the public education system. A lot of these students are homeschoolers and they have parents like me and my husband that are entrepreneurs. They are in Africa, they're in Costa Rica, they're in South Africa, they're maybe they're even in Bali, right? Because a lot of black people have moved abroad. A lot of black people are homeschooling because we wanted to give our children a better education, but we came across one enormous pain point. We are not K through 12 teachers. And so we need people like you to come in and teach our children reading comprehension. We need you to come in and give them fourth grade Zoom sessions so they can up their reading comprehension skills, so they can master arts and African culture, so they can learn music, so they can learn different African kingdoms and African history, or even so they can do biblical studies. But the problem is us parents and entrepreneurs, we just don't have enough time in our day. We're trying as it is, but as you know, in the school system, it's typically not a one man show. You have a lot of teachers collaborating. There's cross-functional teams. You may be in one specific subject, but these black homeschoolers have to master all the subjects. And so here is your opportunity to come in and help them and also help yourself because I believe that black educators deserve to get paid very, very well because you guys are the foundation of what our children are going to learn for the next generation. And so let's run some numbers real quick before I get into the 10 tips. Let's say you have a offer. You're helping tutoring, you're offering tutoring sessions to help students and their parents prepare for X, Y, and Z subject. Let's say it's math. And so they need help with fractions. They need help with division. They need help with decimals. They need help with all of the things. And they hire you to come in. Now, you have this offer that is $250 a month. Actually, let's do 200. We want the math to be simple. $200 a month per student, okay? You're gonna do four Zoom sessions, one every week with them, maybe on Fridays at 10 a.m. Eastern, okay? You send out those Zoom sessions, the students join. So you're not only teaching one student. This is a group coaching. This is the specific business model that is incredible because it gives you so much leverage, okay? So you're gonna multiply that 200 times 10 and you're gonna get 2,000. So that's $2,000 for the month that you just made with a 45 minute Zoom session and the prep work that you did to prepare the students and then the customer service aspect of emailing the parents. Hmm, that's not bad, is it? That's not too bad. So let me just give you some tangible tips 
and some statistics about how profitable this industry is and why you need to be in it. Like you need to be in it like yesterday, not just for yourself, but literally for our community because there's a huge gap in the market in ed tech because it's mostly run by Europeans. But we are a very skilled people and we need to lead the market as well. So number one, I wanna start with a few statistics just to show you the demand in this industry. And so the freelance surge is happening. This is from one of my partners over at Market or Hire. It's actually a company that talks about freelancing, education, consulting. So these are a few statistics they recently pulled out. Last year, Freelance Network tailored a 78% growth in project volume with 80% of hires seeking freelancers in marketing or creator roles and 51% seeking content creators, according to a report from AdAge, okay? Who got hired? Most companies hired freelancers for consulting assignments or long-term staff augmentation roles, while 50% of, of them hired fractional team members. Most companies were looking for freelancers with five years of experience, but mid-market sought those with closer to two to three years of experience. So you can have two side hustles in one. You offer your services to the diaspora, and then you offer your services to these big education tech firms. You have Teachable, you have Teach for America, you have Clever Ed Tech, you have Power School, you have Khan Academy, you have a lot of them. I can actually list out so many of them. And so this is what I'm teaching inside of Black Educators Amplified week by week throughout week one, all the way through week eight. We have to hone in on your expertise and see where your knowledge base is so you can show up online via YouTube, podcast, blog, social media, and start creating content to educate the masses. After you provide this immense value for students, whether it's a YouTube channel, last time in the incubator, we actually helped a few clients to launch their YouTube topics. And so they're teaching these storytelling methods to children one time per week on YouTube. And then they're using something called email marketing to build their email list so that they have these clients literally waiting on them, begging them, hey, come help my child, please, because I need help. On the flip side of that, you're also doing business writing and you're talking about your expertise and coming in as a consultant to provide diversity, equity, and inclusion for these companies as a consultant. So you have these multiple streams of revenue in your education consulting business. Now, before I end this video, I have to give you these tips. There's also a blog that is in the description so that you can save it and use it and share it with your network, share it with your people. These are the 10 precise steps to grow your own education consulting business in 90 days. Number one, you're gonna identify your niche, right? So arts, music, mindfulness, communications, fourth grade reading, seventh grade writing, global history, biblical studies. Step two, you're gonna develop a curriculum. And this curriculum does not have to be like the biggest, most immense curriculum that you can find, you know, start small, start with what you know. Start with what you're good at. Start with something that the fellow teachers that you've been around, the students that you've taught, start with something that they've complimented you on, something that you've been able to get proven results, okay? After that, you're gonna set up the tutoring environment. Now this can be a Zoom session via an Acuity scheduling link, okay? Then you're going to establish your pricing. Starting out, it's best to either offer the service for free to one or two clients, or to network in Facebook groups and use my top tier three-step strategy to network online to find clients in these homeschool and black education groups because there are so many groups out there, but you have to have your messaging honed in and you have to have it super specific so that you can talk to clients and meet them where they're at, okay? Then you're gonna create your business website. I like to use WordPress. You can use something like lead pages. You can use um, Wix. There's a lot of different places. You can use GoDaddy. The reason I use WordPress is because foundationally I'm a writer. And so everything I do stems from the blog content I create. And so WordPress allows me to host my own blog and then distribute that content to an audience. So that's why I choose WordPress. Then you're going to market these services online. So as you can see, I'm on YouTube. YouTube can be an avenue. You can use Facebook, you can use Instagram, you should 100,000% use LinkedIn, okay, child? If you're not using LinkedIn, ma'am, sir, do that like today, right now. Go ahead, get on LinkedIn. You can actually connect with me on there. Tiffany Garside, I'm on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the place that you're going to find a lot of black entrepreneurs. You're going to find a lot of education tech companies that already need you, already have the budget for you, 
but you're not showing up in the space because you don't know what to talk about and what to create content about, right? Then you're going to master business writing. This is something we cover inside of Black Educators Amplified as well. I'm an eight-year copywriter, marketing strategist. This is my area of expertise, helping you to understand how to articulate your offers at a sophisticated level for buyers, okay? Because contrary to popular to popular belief that buy one, buy two, get one free, that stuff doesn't work when you're a service provider. In fact, if you use all those little gimmicks and all that stuff, it makes you look cheap. And so parents and clients will not want to work with you, but I'm going to show you instead the approach that you should take. You want to use sophisticated messaging. You want to provide immense value up front so people know, oh, if this free content is that good, let me go pay for their content because I know they're gonna help me get to the next level, right? That's what you want people to say when they come across your business. Then you're going to track student progress, obviously. You can do this in Canva, you can do this with Notion, but you want to track those outcomes so that you can send them to parents. That's like a detailed monthly report that you can do. We use the same type of method in the marketing world. A detailed report to our clients, you're gonna give a detailed report to the parents once a month. Then you're going to build relationships with parents. You don't even have to leave your house to do this, depending on how busy you are. If you're a mom, if you're a single person and you're not super busy, you can go out into your local community, but this can totally be done online through Facebook groups, okay? And through target market research, which we show inside of Black Educators Amplified. And then number 10, you're going to keep learning and improving. You're gonna use continuous professional development to stay relevant in your field, taking courses, attending workshops, networking events, and then also mastering copywriting, business development, and your business finances to even incorporate your company. And so those are the top tips that I have for you today. I'm so excited for you to start your education consulting firm. And if you have already started, shout out to you. You already got your formation, you got your LLC, but you're like, hold up, how do I find clients? What do I talk about? Meet us inside of Black Educators Amplified because that's where we teach you all the things you need to know and you walk away with a three to six month content marketing plan written by me. But the thing is about this, I only have four slots. Actually, somebody signed up yesterday. So I have three slots left because I just don't have the capacity to work with more than four people at one time. This is a highly tailored highly high touch experience where I can only create the best level of content for four clients at one time. Join us April 21st at 2 p.m. It's going to go on for eight weeks and go ahead, check out the link in the description. See if it's right for you. No pressure. Just see if it's right for you. Best case scenario, it is. And you actually start signing clients within the next 60 days and you come out more confident in your educational expertise. Worst case scenario, you're like, okay, let me just keep digesting free content and stay where I'm at, right? So hope to see you in the course. Talk soon.